process in vivo and ex vivo now direct uh, utilization of nucleic acid is uh, difficult some of the cases because it is much more vulnerable to damage and it may not insert it properly in, into the desired region these things can happen all the time okay so so there could be protein coding dna sequence there are non coding nucleic acid sequences but whatever we are taking and utilizing there are some advantages as well as disadvantages uh, so we can actually we can take both type and uh, for example we can sometimes take antigens for vaccination purpose we can utilize uh, secreted growth factors and cytokines uh, for example and we can also use a small regulatory rnas from the non coding part we can take the catalytic rnas and dnas as as example ribozymes and dna enzymes like that okay now proteins uh, what so what e, what is our actual goal of doing this one thing is that the proteins uh, that substitute the missing or mutated cellular proteins so th this could be one of our objectives so whatever we injecting it will substitute the missing or mutated cellular proteins that that could be one of it okay so like the curing of the autosomal recessive and x linked disorders we are actually substituting some missing and mutant cellular proteins on the other hand we can do or we can uh, we are trying to do something where proteins modulating the cellular functions okay so we have to supply a missing cellular function of the protein so we would supplement some of the proteins which will eventually uh, uh, eventually remedy the missing cellular function okay for example here using the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors like p27 p21 and p53 we can uh, go against this different uh, we can induce the arrest of the cell proliferation in most of the cancer uh, diseases utilizing the fact or utilizing so if we are providing the genes which supplement the cell with this uh, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors like p27 p21 and p53 it can eventually block uh, the exponential growth of the cells of the cancer cells on the other hand if we are supplying uh, it with uh, related viral uh, infections or proteins which which are related to the viral infection it, it can block the activity of some viral diseases okay on the other hand we can uh, excite uh, the host body immune system by supplying them with b7 icam1 lfhc and some some proteins like that okay so which are down regulate the tu in tumors so down regulation of inside the tumor cells of, of this b7 icam1 can lead to the tumor propagation so if we are uh, exciting the cell to produce all this like b7 icam1 lfhc or we are injecting the nucleotide sequences injecting the genes for producing these proteins it will eventually uh, rise or increase the immune response of the body of that organism and as a result those tumor cell propagation will be halted or it it can have the immune response against most of the diseases okay so disease can be prevented now another application of it is antigens for the vaccination so vast range of gene therapy applications have the immune response as their target because if we utilize uh, some of these genes to increase the immune response as i have talked before as we have uh, as we have discussed before like uh, the development of this b7 icam1 and lfhc some like something like that so in this case uh, the immune response development will uh, will help this, this to fight against different infections okay so genetic vaccination via this kind of procedures so this consists of the utilization of the gene transfer to activate the immune response by either the delivery of gene coding of immunomodulatory cytokines or by transferring into the cancer cells by transferring into the cancer cell it will rapidly uh, so genes coding for the co stimulatory proteins necessary for the antigenic presentation so this cell will start presenting those antigens and uh, that's how the vaccination uh, in previous times could be done inside those cells okay so what we can do we can activate the immune response inside a body by modulating uh, the secretion of the cytokines and immunomodulatory cytokines okay now this genetic vaccination offers several advantages over the common vaccination strategy uh, okay and this uh, this vaccination could be genetically modified and could be genetically transferred from one generation to another generation 
okay and this include the possibility to evoke a cytotoxic immune response okay so as it is evoking a cytotoxic immune response this kind of response will be rapid okay because it will be mediated by mhc class 1 molecule so it could be ra very very rapid unlike the mhc class 2 mediated which is much more uh, delayed one because cytotoxic one is rapid and it is very fast okay and what are the cellular barriers for a gene therapy for a gene delivery there are barriers like plasma membrane which is a lipid bilayer remember we all know that plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer which is having a polar and hydrophobic construction so polar hairs outside hydrophobic regions inside so it's an impermeable barrier to a large or charged molecules charged macromolecules so charged macromolecules cannot enter into it such as dna and rna like that so entry of this polyanions into the cells need to be facilitated so for the insertion uh, via or through this plasma membrane can be achieved uh, via different means so we can deliver we can deliver a required gene inside the nucleus of the cell by uh, utilizing biological weapons like uh, viruses because virus uh, will simply go and virus coat will simply fuse with the cell membrane of uh, our desired cell and thus the normal biological process will allow the entrance of the desired gene into the cell okay so that's why viral mediated genes uh, gene therapy is pretty much accepted nowadays because it's normal it's natural we don't need to bother much about everything okay but if you are utilizing physical techniques uh, like gene gun or uh, say other direct injection incorporation of nucleic acids we need to be careful we need to uh, push it a little bit more hard to go uh, through this barrier sometimes the barrier is hampered or something like that can also happen so methods uh, for the gene delivery actually there are four different uh, vehicles for the transfer of these genes one is the naked plasmid so the plasmid would be circular covalently closed dna we, we, which we can use or we can also use short regulatory nucleotides like oligonucleotides like uh, siRNA and others to uh, to be inserted okay short uh, rna segment can be inserted and second thing is by physical methods like via gene gun method so in gene gun method we are having gold particles it is covered with our desired gene okay again this both of the plus naked plasmid transfer as well as uh, this gene gun method both of them are type of physical methods it will uh, hamper the, it can hamper the cell in due to some extent but on the other hand we can utilize uh, it via, uh, via the coated uh, vehicle like lipo lipofection via the lipoprotein or lipoliposome and via the viruses in both the process like uh, lipofection and via the viral mediation uh, it is simple uh, in this type of processes where i am having vehicles and inside the vehicles we are having our desired gene so it is much more safe in case of lipofection as well as viral mediated gene delivery nowadays viral mediated gene transfer and gene therapy is a most common mode of gene delivery in case of gene therapy okay so there are four mediators uh, plasmid uh, or direct naked dna uh, by physical methods by lipofection and by viral mediation okay so uh, by telling this i am going to conclude this lecture and i hope it will help you to understand the basics of gene therapy and what is actually gene therapy and consecutive visual video lectures will be discussing about more of this uh, each of these techniques okay so that's it and i hope it will help you thank you